Hey, what's up there? Paul James here. And over the next 10 or 15 minutes, I've got some awesome training that I'm going to deliver to you. Uh, no fluff, nothing, nothing going on here. I just want to bring you some awesome value. So what I need from you is to promise that you're going to close out of all distractions, Facebook, uh, your email, your phone, t turn it off, shut it down for the next 10, 15 minutes. And in return, I'm going to give you some awesome off-page optimization strategies to help you rank for practically anything you want. And I'm giving you this in a quick 15 minute tutorial so that you can easily digest this. So whether you want to rank for local stuff, affiliate stuff, launch jacking, this is going to be awesome for you. So let's just go ahead and dive in. I've got a keyword pulled up for Dentist West Bend, Wisconsin. So first off, for those of you who don't know what off-page optimization is, it's basically the process of getting people to point links back to your site. So I have a site called, let's say, westbenddentist.com. My goal is to try to get as many other sites, uh, high quality sites as I can, to point back to westbenddental.com or whatever my site might be called, westbenddentist.com. So let's say I get CNN to write an article about me. At the end of that article, they put a link back to my site and say, hey, go check out West Bend Dentist or whatever. And that would be considered a backlink. So we're gonna talk more about the quality of backlinks and why that's important. But the first thing you really wanna do is you wanna go ahead and do a Google search on the keyword you're trying to rank for. So let's say that I have a dentist client or I am a dentist in West Bend, Wisconsin. Maybe that's the keyword I'm trying to rank for. I would go and do a Google search for it. Now this also works for the three pack. So if you're trying to rank in this little three pack map listings, it's the same strategy, but um, you can also rank organically as well. So what you want to do is you want to grab some of your top competitors and you want to reverse engineer what they're doing. So just go ahead and click on one of them, open up their site, grab their URL. So I like to use this tool majestic.com to basically find out what's going on. So go into majestic, go ahead and punch in their URL, use the fresh index and hit search, and you're going to see the number of backlinks they have. Now you're going to notice a couple different numbers. There's a number down here which says external backlinks and then a number down here which means referring domains. So basically they have five backlinks but those backlinks are only coming from two domains. So this is a number that I'm really primarily concerned with. I want to know the unique number of domains that are linking back to them. And in this case it's only two. So this signifies to me that that's very low competition. Basically I only need two backlinks to compete with them. Um, so let's go back and check out some of the other competitors. Let's, let's check out the three pack. So we do the same thing with the three pack. Grab the URL, punch it into Majestic like this and hit search. All right, a little bit more, right? No surprise that they're ranking higher in the three pack. They've, they've got some more backlinks going on here. Now we can dive in even deeper with Majestic and hit the referring domains thing. And this is going to show us exactly which domains they have backlinks on. So this is a great way to basically kind of take a grassroots approach to backlinking. You know, the theory is if these sites are linking to this dentist and if I'm a dentist or my client's a dentist in the area and I also have good content on my site, chances are they'll want to link to me as well. So I might go through here and just see if there's any sites on here that I might be able to get a link from. So I could just go in and look at them and actually open them up. So this looks like some sort of like directory site. So I could probably, there's probably a place on here to submit a listing if I wanted to. Yeah, here's a join now link right here. So I could probably add my site to this as well. So that's just kind of a grassroots approach. Now, the problem with grassroots approaches is they're not always the best quality of backlinks. Um, it could be a good place to start, but you're gonna lack control and it's not always going to be the best quality of backlink. So in order to understand the quality of backlink, I'm going to need to dive in and give you a little bit of a history on metrics and what metrics you really want to be looking out for. Let's go ahead and start here. I've got my little Photoshop document open here and I'm just going to start, uh, I'm just going to start revealing terms to you. So PageRank. PageRank runs on a scale of 0 to 10. Google made this scale up as a way to basically judge the authority of a site. So here's what I mean by that. Zero would be the lowest page rank, 10 would be the highest. So if I had a backlink coming from a page, a page rank three site, and my competitor had a backlink coming from a page rank zero or page rank one, my backlink would be better, and chances are that I would probably outrank them. The problem is, is Google doesn't update page rank very often anymore. So we're now using the scale, most SEOs are anyways, uh, called domain authority. And if you've already heard of this stuff, I'm going to kind of breeze past it. But domain authority is basically a third party uh, scale that was introduced by a company called Moz. And this scale runs on 0 to 100. Basically, the way this works is you just tack a 0 onto it. So if, if it was a page rank 3, 
uh, the domain authority would be 30. So when you see a domain authority of like, let's say 35, then it's basically a PageRank 3.5. We're using that scale now because PageRank really is not updated anymore. So that's why we're using that scale. So that's what the page rank and domain authority scale mean, and it basically determines the, the quality of the backlink. Page authority, another scale that was introduced by Moz. Basically, uh, it's pretty much similar to domain authority, only it's on a per page basis. So it's that specific page on the site. So there's a couple of other things that come into play here, and that is trust flow and citation flow. So let me explain a little bit about what trust flow and citation flow um, are. So it basically determines the backlinks quality. Um, so what I mean by that is the specific site. So if I have a site, let's just go back to our example here. You can see the summary. Here's the trust flow is 11, citation flow is 25. So what that means is it's the backlink quality of westbendfamilydentist.com. So let me explain what I mean by that. And this is just a rough gauge. Obviously, if you wanted to like be super precise and super accurate, you would actually go in manually and investigate their backlinks and check out their backlinks page or domain authority and page authority if you really wanted to know. But I use this as kind of like a quick um, threshold to just kind of determine like, okay, I'm pretty certain that this is the case. So if you saw a domain, like let's say I went and saw that westbendentist.com or whatever it was, and I saw that the trust flow and citation flow were 20 and 24. The closer these two numbers are together, usually signifies the quality of their backlink profile. So if they have a trust flow and citation flow that are closer together, it usually means that their backlinks pointing to that domain are higher authority. Whereas if come down here and trust flow and citation flow is nine and 24, they're further apart, meaning they probably have a really crappy backlink profile is what I mean by that. So if we come back to this example again, westbendfamilydentist.com, they have 10 referring domains, but the trust flow is 11 and citation flow is 25. Very, very spread out across the board, which signifies to me that they probably don't have the best backlink profile, which means that if I go after good backlinks, I can probably outrank them with a lot less than 10. That's basically what that tells me. So when you're looking at stuff like this and you're, and you're analyzing things um, and you're buying like private blog network sites, which we're gonna talk about in a minute, that's one of the metrics I look for. I like to see a trust flow of above 10, a citation flow of above 10, and a domain authority of above 10. And the higher, the better. And then last but not least is the domain's age. That's another factor that comes into play. So now that we know what all of these metrics mean, and we can properly analyze this, you notice I hinted at getting better backlinks than my competitors have. So like I said, we could go and reverse engineer their domains and we could just take all the backlinks they do have, but SEO is usually about doing one better than your competition, not just copying them exactly. You wanna go and you wanna basically one-up them. So a lot of SEOs use PBNs to do that. Uh, it's called a private blog network. And a private blog network basically allows you to find expired domains that already have these good metrics and use them to link back to your website, right? So. What we do is, let's say there's a site out there called soccer.com. Let's just say soccerpractice.com. I don't own the site or anything. But let's say it has all these really good metrics. Let's say it has a domain authority of 20 and a trust flow of 19 and a citation flow of 18. And so I know that it's got really good metrics. Well, what happens is if someone lets this expire, so they register it through GoDaddy, let's say, and it comes up to expiration and they forget to renew it. What GoDaddy does is they auction this domain off to the highest bidder, soccerpractice.com. They auction off to the highest bidder, and then what happens is, is I go and I bid on that site and I rebuild it out. So I, I've got my domain, I rebuild it out, and it holds all of the same metrics because I rebuilt it out right away. And then what I do is I go on that site, you know, I, I basically rebuild it out. Let's let's draw a little diagram here. So I've got my little website here, right? I'm, I'm a bad artist, but soccerpractice.com, that's my website. Down here at the bottom or on the sidebar or within an article, I'm gonna paste a link at the bottom to westbendfamilydental.com. And that's gonna be considered a backlink coming from a really high authority domain. This gives us 100% complete control. So if we're working with a client and we wanna rank them fast, we can plug them into our private blog network where we have these expired domains that already have high metrics. We come in, we, we get the client, they pay us a monthly fee, we place their link on their site, boom, within a couple of weeks, they're ranking because of this off-page optimization. Now, what happens when they don't pay? Well, we come back into our site, right? And 
we just delete their link from there. We delete the link from their from our site and they lose ranking. This is the beauty about private blog networks, okay? So now I'm gonna show you how you can actually go and pick up these private blog networks. So I showed you Majestic and Majestic is a great way to analyze private blog networks and really dig into the metrics of sites. But you need to find the sites that are actually expiring and for this I use a service called DomCop. Okay, you, you could just go to auctions.godaddy.com and you can you can look in here and I think that they only charge you like $3 or something like that every quarter or something. I don't remember. It's ridiculously low. And you can do it that way. Or you can use um, a site like Register Compass. Or you can use a site like DomCop, which is what I was talking about. Now, I really like DomCop because they have all the metrics here already for you. They have what the domain authority is, what the page authority is, what the trust flow is, citation flow. So they have all of these metrics here for you already. So what I like to do is I like to go through here and then you can bid on the site. You know, it shows you like what the bid's going for. Well, this is like 5 million. Obviously, it's a really high authority domain. So as you start to go down, you see a lot of these domains are like 69 bucks, right? They start to, they start to get better. So let's just take this for example. One of the things you want to do is you want to actually go in and take a look at what this site used to look like. Like you don't want to get a site that is totally um, spammed out. So what I do is I use this Wayback Machine. I punch in the URL, go back to like when the site was active and start opening up screenshots of what it used to look like. So it'll actually show you what the site was. This to me looks really good. Um, tree menu JavaScript applet. It looks like some sort of script that was meant for JavaScript. Um, see, it's a, a cross-browser DHTML tree with visual online builder. So something for developers. So you can use this so that you know what the site is about. It's a technology site, obviously. And I can use this to my advantage when I want to go and rebuild out the site. So you would need to go and bid on the site. Shows what it's going for, $69. Um, and then you would click on it. Looks like this one's through Namejet. So you would click on it and go bid on it over at Namejet. Just clicking on it will take you over there. And then it's time to rebuild the site. So when you rebuild out the site, you need to put it on a separate hosting. A lot of people think that they can host their domains with one host. I personally don't like to do that because you don't want to make it look like all of your backlinks are coming from one single host. You want to make it look natural and realistic like all of your backlinks are coming from separate websites, separate hosts. So go and get a separate web host provider. You can go on web hosting talk forums. They have shared hosting offers there for like a dollar a month. You just type in Google, you know, a dollar a month web host. You'll find options. And then you need to register the site and either register it as a private domain, um, private who is information, or use a fake name so that all of your sites have different who is records. So that, again, it doesn't look like all the domains are used for the same person. Then it's simple. You just build out a site, you can use WordPress, um, throw on a random theme for each one you build, throw in random plugins, you know, you don't want to create any sort of footprint, don't use the same theme every time, don't use the same plugins every time, and build them all out, all right? And um, then you can go in and you can throw your link into the site and have your own backlinks. So now that you know how this whole process works, you're probably starting to realize that this can get to be a lot of work to manage. What I mean by that is most people end up having like a huge long spreadsheet with their domains in them, um, the, the login information for cPanel, the login information for WordPress. They have to go in, they have to set these sites up and managing them is a big pain in the butt. So what I'm doing is I'm shooting this video to teach you this stuff and anyone who's interested in even more information on how I manage this, I'm gonna do a webinar. All you need to do is sign up using the, the form or the link below to our webinar, and during that webinar, I'm going to teach you more about how I actually set up these domains, the private blog networks, how I manage them without having to use a, you know, a long spreadsheet, and I'm gonna break that process all down for you. So. I hope to see you on that webinar. More information will be below this video on when it's going to be and, and all of that good stuff. And I can't wait to teach you more about this stuff because I truly believe that this is the best way to rank and all of the, the big SEOs that you probably know about are using the same strategy because it's just is so easy. Um, you can just get people ranked so fast and so easy. All right, guys, thanks for stopping by this video. I hope that you enjoyed this training.